Hello, and welcome to Easy Bake Takes. My name is Kat. And I'm Riley. And we are almost done with the Twilight Saga. We've made it to Breaking Dawn Part 1. It's week four of this, which is week crazy. Week four. Really doing it. Really in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take it away, Riley. Tell me everything about Breaking Dawn Part 1. The storyline is Bella and Edward celebrate their wedding, but after their honeymoon on Isle as me, things take a turn for the worse when Bella realizes she's pregnant. As the baby grows at an abnormally fast rate and causes many health problems to Bella, Edward and the wolf pack fear that she may give birth to an immortal child. But the Cullens will do everything they can to ensure that both Bella and the unborn child remain safe. What did you think of this movie? So the first thing I'd like to say is... Bella's high school friends at the wedding were my favorite part. Mm-hmm. Um, just Jessica being like, no one gets married at 18 if they're not pregnant, yeah. which I think is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing was her speech, that she, Jessica's speech that she oh, gives, where she's yeah. like, she's not even like the captain of the volleyball team or anything. <laughs> like, But he chose Bella. And it's like, wow, you're the worst. You are a bad friend. <laughs> you really are. But then they make fun of her cake. They're just like, what the what the fuck is her cake (laughs) or something they like they don't make fun of her cake but they're like standing around the cake they're like judging her wedding which i just think is funny it just seems like maybe they shouldn't have been invited to the wedding because she hasn't really been a friend to them in a very long time they don't ever hang out like they hang out with the first two and that's about it yeah they're not they're not in the like they don't they're not friends that's the thing too like bella doesn't really have friends so those are the only ones she could invite that weren't related to her it's kind of sad it is very sad the other thing was alice and charlie's speech i liked their speeches charlie was just like i will hunt you down and kill you if you hurt my daughter (laughs) which i think is the funniest like they could kill you sir Mm -hmm. but i appreciate the energy a father's love can kill (laughs) After Jacob finds out that Bella is pregnant and he turns into, he's like running home, he turns into a wolf and he mm-hmm. lets out the softest a woo. A woo. <laughs> like their howls. Why did they make them so soft and quiet I when know. all of the wolves are like, they're just like, a woo. <laughs> they, they get, the critics I picked get into the CGI in this movie. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm just like, the, just yeah the sound of these things yeah that they chose to pick them going oh <laughs> and then whenever he gets there and is talking to all the other wolves they sound like they're about like why did they the wolves should never talk again <laughs> like they should not talk while they're in wolf form <laughs> at all like i know they're like talking to each other from their minds mm-hmm. but the way the dialogue sounds it sounds like they're about to break into song <laughs> like while they're talking to yeah. each other and they're like we should kill Bella. And like, th- that just sounds like where it's going. It just sounds. God. It just sounds so cheesy. Mm-hmm. And then the acting in this one, it just got worse. Mm-hmm. It just got fucking worse. Everyone, any progress that anyone had made, they were just, whatever. We're, we're doing this now. It's whatever. We're just going to say, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I thought was just really fucking funny and just mm-hmm. the way they did it was really awkward but it was funny, mm-hmm. was whenever Jacob throws the bowl of food at Rosalie's head, <laughs> and everyone just starts laughing at her. And she's like, you ruined my hair. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> and that's it. And yeah, that's all I have written down. That's the majority of this movie is like just, I don't know, there's a lot of weird parts in this movie too. This is probably one of my least favorites of the franchise. Like mm-hmm. this is, this was pretty, it was boring and oh yeah what's interesting about this one it's the shortest so far Mm -hmm. but it felt the longest like it felt longer than new moon yeah and i'm just gonna do it it does drag i'm just gonna do a tiny bit of comparing of this movie this part one finale movie Mm -hmm. to part one of deathly hallows deathly hallows part one so super interesting Mm -hmm. don't make the part one a filler movie yeah don't make it two hours of filler when you could very clearly have turned this into one movie. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's just a cash grab thing to make it two parts. I That's get that. A, a lot of people said that, yeah. Breaking Dawn Part 1 doesn't make me want to go watch Breaking Dawn Part 2. And you know that part that I told you to remember where she's like, Until, until my heart, my stops heart beating. starts beating. Yeah. And then her heart stops beating. And then the baby is born. And that's who he's in love with. 
the fucking child. That's gross. And they try to they try to turn it into like, oh, he just he's not in love with her. He just wants to protect her. And it's like, no, you're making yeah. it weird. No, you made it weird. You made, you it, made weird. it weird. Well, when you when you're saying imprinting, and they use that language as in falling in love with someone. Yeah, and all the examples. Yeah, and they show you all the examples. So it's kind of weird when you try to flip that and go, oh, no, he just wants to protect her. Well, why does he want to protect her? Why is he here? Another thing, babies mm -hmm. are made up of two things, okay? Egg and sperm. So that means he should have been obsessed with Edward, too. Yeah, it's... <laughs> well, someone on... And I did include this one, but someone on Letterbox like, this was a New Age movie. Edward, Bella, and Jacob would be a throuple. <laughs> yes, they totally would. They would be a fucking throuple. Yeah. And it would have been fantastic. It and would I would have been... liked it so much more. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I thought this movie was super boring. I thought it was, it was just, and it was just weird. It was just, it had a lot of weird moments. Did you have any other background information or are we just jumping right in? Because I'm assuming all the actors in this one have been in the other ones. So. Yeah, I want to mention the director real quick because the director Yeah, another is, new one. Yeah, it's another new one. It's not David Splade, which is disappointing. It's Bill Condon. He's known for directing the newest Beauty and the Beast. Dream Girls and Kin Kinsey. The writers are the same. Melissa Rosenberg is the screenplay writer. Stephanie Meyer wrote the books. Same same cast. No one's new. <laughs> um, yeah. Res we, Resine Zimizzi. Renesme. Renes Renesme. Whatever her name is. There's one thing. So like Edward's past is brought up randomly at the beginning. And he's ashamed mm -hmm. of him. Like, why Why is this now being brought up? And also, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you were killing murderers, okay? Like, why is that? <laughs> why does... That's cool. Like, I feel yeah. like they should have mentioned that at the beginning. And I could have gotten on board with you as a person a little mm -hmm. bit more, sir. Yeah. But, like, now... I don't I just care. It's such an odd place to mention that. Like in this movie too. Like if you're gonna mention that, mention it when she finds out you're a vampire. I don't know. I think it's weird. Maybe they felt that his character needed a redemption. Like maybe Stephanie Meyer, when she was writing the books, was like, "Let's redeem him just a tiny bit." But it was released in 2011, and these movies came back to back to back. It's crazy how fast these mm -hmm. movies came out. It's the fourth film in the Twilight Saga. Um, the runtime is an hour and 57 minutes, which is the shortest one so far. Yeah. So we'll see what Breaking Down Part 2, how long that is. So fun fact about the movie. Uh, Robert Pattinson took a boat driving lesson, so he'd be able to drive the boat in the honeymoon scenes. Uh, but, but despite taking lessons, he crashed the boat in both the lessons and while filming in Brazil, <laughs> which I think is so on, so on point for that man. Yeah. Very on point for that man to not be able to drive a boat after taking <laughs> just crashing them through what well, sounds like three different times, both yeah. lessons and then filming in Brazil. So, brother, you just had to drive the boat straight. <laughs> How do you crash a boat? How do you do that? And they're where they're driving it. It's they open water. It, is that why they only drive it for like five seconds? Yeah, like, in like the big ocean open water. I don't I don't know. He had to pull it out. Like he had to like pull it out from the dock into the ocean. Yeah. Or whatever. So maybe he crashed it there. And I'm assuming that it was probably that short because he crushed the boat. God, that's funny. Uh, so let's jump into the critics. Um, I have my first article here. Um, it's a review by Debbie Lynn. She starts by saying, Parts of it sparkle like the luminous skin of the Cullen clan. Other parts buy into it, buy into you and hold your attention like the werewolves taking a bite of their favorite dinner. And then other aspects are more lifeless than the Bella Swan after giving birth. Debbie talks about how she thinks the director, Bill Condon, doesn't completely understand the Twilight universe. Therefore, the movie mm -hmm. doesn't match up with the richness, richness of the book. I, I didn't read the book. Yeah, I don't know anything about the books, but like... Based on the last movies. Just but from the fans, too. They're like, it doesn't... It's not as good as the book at all. Debbie says, I still maintain, as I always do, read the book. It's always better. So there you go. Uh, she thought Kristen Stewart's performance was good, but was unimpressed with Robert Pattinson's. She says, Robert Pattinson's dialogue delivery is flat and insincere. Is he tired of the role, or is Condon's direction that poor? Which, mm -hmm. I'm going to... I'm going to say both because I know he didn't like playing Edward. I'm going to say Condon. This is, I'm sorry, this movie was bad. So I'm going to blame the director a little bit too. Well, yeah, because he, his acting in Eclipse wasn't terrible. No, like, you no, know, I, I really don't have an issue with his acting. It's just, I, if someone did, I can see why. I can, I know the reasons why. She did love Taylor's performance though. And she thinks he has the potential to be a leaning man one day. Wrong. 
Okay, this was written back when it came out. I don't think he's shown any growth in his acting abilities in this one. I think he just had <laughs> less to say. He he had a... I feel like he did have more. This is how I'm looking at it mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. in this moment. I think his character had different emotions that he had to portray in yes. this one. Yes. And I think they were closer to his abilities. She praised other supporting roles like Billy Burke as Charlie. She praises him and then Ashley Green. Everyone loves uh, Billy Burke and Ashley Green in these movies. There's not a critic the out best. there who will not mention them. Like... It's fantastic. I love it. Debbie was not impressed with the screenplay. She notes the book is rich in dialogue and detail and calls the screenplay hokey. And this is my personal note. I thought the whole honeymoon scene, <laughs> they're playing chess. Something that got me with the whole honeymoon thing that mm -hmm. I, I forgot to mention earlier mm -hmm. was like all of a sudden, Edward's like, oh, we could have been having sex this whole time. Are you kidding me? So is this Stephanie Meyer going, so I don't hate sex, okay? I just hate sex outside of marriage. Yeah. It's very silly. And like it is. The music in it is like really weird too. Like it's it's a little cor it's hokey. It doesn't capture the melodramatic energy that the other ones do. Mm -hmm. It it's like trying to be I don't know, I feel like it's trying to compete with like dramas meant for adults and it's not doing a good job at it. Exactly. I feel like if this if these movies aren't playing Bon Iver <laughs> in their background songs, yeah. they're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's not what he, w this shit, whatever's in the, the soundtrack for this one, that's not what the teens want. No. We want our fucking <laughs> Bon Iver and Muse. Okay. E exactly. She does praise the overall wedding scene. The director delivers in space with aesthetic cinematography, lensing, set design, and editing. So she appreciates the wedding scene, which mm -hmm. I do too. It's a very pretty wedding. I love all the yeah, flowers. I, I think once they the wedding ends, the movie starts getting bad. Honestly, yes. Because, like, after they... after It's actually at the wedding reception. Like, it's, like, it just gets corny. And, like, everyone gets, like, bad speeches. It's just, like, really funny. Another thing. Sorry to add these in the middle of... No, you're fine. ...going through the critics. I don't know. Like, something about Jacob's character in this one... I understand that he's, like, maybe 17 or 18 at this point. Mm -hmm. But, like, his character is so all over the place. Because at the beginning, he's, like, angry. And then mm -hmm. he goes to the wedding, and he's fine. Yeah. And him and Bella just talk to each other like they're fine. And then it goes back to angry, and then he's fine. And then he's angry, and then he's fine. And it just, like, the way they do it doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I get confused with his character. I'm like, what is he talking about now? Why is he angry now? It's, I don't know. I don't know why Bella gives him the time of day, too. Like, why are you... Slow dancing with this dude at your wedding. That's so... That was such a weird scene. And he just kind of leaves them. I'm like what and like you're you've been trying bella talking to bella directly you've been trying this entire franchise to let jacob know you don't want him and he has no chance mm -hmm. yet you're dancing with him at your wedding you're still sending this boy mixed signals yeah it's not nice and he's a fucking incel weirdo yeah. still like this movie just heightens it even more and i'm just like get out of there this movie really like i'm realizing like we tolerated this stuff with the last few ones. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed it even. Enjoyed it. We're getting to the point with this one where like, okay, let's start putting stuff together because it's getting old. It's kind of getting old. You're not getting away with this shit for any longer. No, <laughs> no, it needs to change. Stuff needs to change. The first three were perfect. Yeah. This one is just thrown away trash that they just said, they'll watch anything. Yeah. <laughs> and no, you're wrong. I won't just watch anything. I did, but I won't again. Because <laughs> I did not You've like it. betrayed my trust. <laughs> I don't know if the second one's going to be any good. I'm worried. I'm, I'm scared. Yep. Yeah. And we see more of creepy CGI, baby. So Ew, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Last thing about the wedding. Mm -hmm. Why were they having their ceremony on a fucking very sunny day? Oh, that's... Yes. And also... They for completely forgot about the sparkle thing in this movie with the sun. Yeah. Because they're literally on a beach. He tiny bit does it. I didn't see it. His shoulder, because it's t like hitting the sun. But anywhere yeah. else, it's like, oh, okay. So they don't sparkle anymore? I guess Bill was like, I'm going on a different, I'm going in a new direction with that. <laughs> no <laughs> more sparkles. Do it. No more sparkles. Vampire's going to be in the sun now. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Debbie says that although the wedding scene will make Twilight fans happy to see, the movie has too many failures and shortcomings. Her last words for this are, the fans, the story, 
and the Twilight franchise deserve better. And I agree. I absolutely I agree with that. Also, okay, hold the phone because this might just be a story problem that I have with Miss Meyer. Mm-hmm. Why at the last second is Bella like, you know what? I don't want to be a vampire anymore. Maybe we don't have to do this right away. And it's like, you've been pushing this entire series to mm-hmm. be like, turn me now. Turn me right now. Like, yeah. right fucking now. Turn me now. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, well, we jumped off of a cliff and I remembered that I like being human sometimes. She's a, she's very, I, I find her character very annoying. Because like, yeah. like, Alice is like playing the wedding and she's going, it's a little much. I'm like, fuck you. Like, she's playing a wedding for you. You can say yeah. thank you. Let her do this. She wants to do it. She could have worn flats to her wedding. She didn't have to wear heels. She did not have to wear heels. I actually thought she wore Converse at her wedding. I don't know why. It must have just been that era where, you know, I it was cool the, to wear Converse with dresses. I don't know. I think in the, maybe in the book. I don't know. I also blame Demi Lovato for the, who says I can't wear my Converse? I must have just, like, confused that with this i'm thinking she's gonna show up in some cool converse similar era similar vibe it's all around the same thing it all mixes together uh, my next article and i feel like we've read so many of his articles it's like wrong to leave them out so i brought up richard props richard props Rich- richard props from the independent critic he wrote a review about breaking dawn he's seen all of them he's like uh talking about an experience where he's walking to the movie theater and he overhears a group of like young women going to go see it and one of them goes, I've been waiting all, I've been waiting for this all year. This is going to be the best night of my life. And he's kind of annoyed by it, but like, leave her alone. She wants to, she's yeah. excited about this. Richard, I haven't, I haven't been excited about a movie like that in a long time. So I envy that. Richard goes on to say, if you're a proud member of the team Edward, team Jacob, or simply team Twilight, then there seems to be a pretty darn good chance that this that this first of two films is aimed squarely at you and you're going to whip yourself into an orgasmic frenzy of vampiric delight regardless of what any silly old film critic says. I just love his wording. I just love how creative he gets with it. Me too. Like, and it's not, the way, whenever he does it, it's not like pretentious like some of the other ones. It it just feels like he enjoys, he enjoys writing. Yeah, exactly. He likes, he likes writing. Uh, Richard insists he's not a Twilight hater and mentions how he gave Eclipse a decent review. And praises he David did. Slade's directing for it. He did give it a yeah. pretty decent review. He expresses how disappointing he is in this film and describes it as an overly long, overwrought, and widely uneven film that is likely only to truly please the most hardcore Twilight fans. That I agree. Hardcore Twilight mm-hmm. fans, they probably mm-hmm. love it. But I don't know. If they read the books, I don't know. I feel like a lot of different people will either hate this movie or like this movie. I feel like if you read the books, you're probably not going to like this movie. If we just throw it back for a second to when my mm-hmm. sister gave me her ranking of Twilight movies. Mm-hmm. The Breaking Dawn movies were at the end of her ranking. Mm. They don't They do not do it. They don't yeah. bring the magic. He says, because we have a lot of time to kill to turn, to turn this into a full-length feature film... The build-up to the wedding is drawn out to at least 20 to 30 minutes, with ample amounts of Edward feeling guilty, Bella looking nervous, Jacob racing off into werewolf field rages, and absolutely zero in the way of tension being built up. Everything drags. So everything that's about to come up, the wedding, the honeymoon, the pregnancy, the birth, they're all dragged out. Because that's four things, but this is a two-hour film. They're on that honeymoon for way too long. Way too long. He says another half is devoted to the honeymoon, where it's a lot of back and forth from Edward and Bella. Then he says, Bella ends up pregnant. He says the other Twilight movies have visually compelling poetic journeys. This one lacks that because of Bill Conan. He says Bill lacks confidence in his and his direction. He lacks the fluidity and almost mystical quality that previous Twilight films have captured. Richard talks about how that this movie had a budget of a $110 million budget, which is huge compared to Eclipse, which had a $68 million budget. So however, this movie doesn't show any higher standards with the budget and claims flashbacks and dream sequences are amateurish and have old school special effects. It's pretty bad. It's not good. It's, it really is not. Davis Lay would have done a better job. <laughs> But also, as a director, he took the time, David Slade took the time to sit down with each and every one of the main characters mm-hmm. and actually talk to them and, like, talk through the story storyline with them. Yeah. But I, I feel like David, what is it, Con- what is it, not David, Will, Bill? Bill Condon, yeah. Bill Condon didn't, it feels like he didn't do that. 
Like, he didn't take the time to get to know the actors and their characters. He just Mm -hmm. kind of was like, I'll read the script and we can go. Yeah. Richard talks about how Bella is a love-struck teenager determined to die for love. He says, well, I've heard time and again that young women are swept up in this as true love. It's hard to wonder how, quote, I have to die for love is a true love message. It sounds like domestic violence to me. That says, yeah, that says Stuart remains one of the true standouts of the Twilight series. And we, I'm sure we've talked about this before. It's like very much so. It's very toxic. Just make sure you're reassuring the young people or impressionable people in your life that they don't deserve to be treated this way. Mm-hmm. And that's not what love should be mm-hmm. and whatnot. And I think it stands throughout the entire series where you're just having to be like, okay, no. Yeah. That's, that's not healthy. That's wrong. Stephanie. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Taylor Lautner. He came so close in the last film to showing an emotion that I allow myself that I allowed myself false hope that he'd finally stretch and become the Ruber Grant of Twilight and at least make a bit of a name for himself. All Lautner does here, however, is grimace and growl, and if my memory serves me well, he actually only takes his shirt off one to two times. Richard mentions Billy Burke's performance. Billy Burke has always added an emotional depth to the films that they sorely needed, and his scenes early in The Breaking Dawn are both funny and remarkably touching. There is not a film critic out there who hates Billy Burke in the Twilight series. They love Billy Burke. He's amazing. He's so fantastic. He truly is. Richard ends his article by telling Twilight fans that if they've been along for the ride, then go ahead and see it. You'll probably like it. But if you're not a fan, don't bother. We can all just end at Eclipse and we have the knowledge that they have a baby. They, Bella gets, they get married. Uh, Bella's a vampire now. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to know. Right. Really. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's like New Moon. You could skip that one. Exactly. Yeah. Where did they put this budget? Where the fuck are they putting this $110 million budget? That's where I'm wondering, where did the money go? Was it where the did that money go? To, was it the honeymoon? Like, is that where all the money went? I'm guessing that's what it was. It was Robert Pattinson's boating, boating lessons and paying for the boats he crashed. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's all it was. It was just pay, paying back the insurance for the boats that Robert Pattinson crashed. They used it nowhere else. <laughs> I couldn't tell you where else they used it. Those animated scenes inside of Bella when she's Yeah, like, those and like her, like how they did her makeup or they did the CGI to make her look. The whole birthing scene is really scary. I hate the birth scene. The birth scene, like, I was like, ugh. And now we can move on to some really good ones by different people. This is a five-star one from a year ago on Rotten Tomatoes. They write, absolutely great. I've watched this entire set over and over more than any movie I've ever watched. This was your favorite one out of all of them? Over Eclipse? I just don't get that. I just, I mean, I'm glad you liked it, but... Good for you. Good for you, I guess. This is a three-star one from Rotten Tomatoes. This was January 16, 2022, so not that long Mm -hmm. ago. This one is surely the worst of the series, though it mostly earns the distinction in the same way that part one in Deathly Hollows was the worst of the Harry Potter movies. Not true. That's a lie. (laughs) That's a lie. They saved the real climax for an entirely separate movie, leaving this one to feel like a collection of rising actions and exposition. This one was also the least best book of the series by quite a margin, with parts of it feeling like an excuse for Stephanie to write some write someone winning a pro-life argument. I mean, if the people who wrote the books caught that, I am sure that that is true. Yep. The decision to have Jacob imprint on the baby was surely part of the overall story outline from the beginning, but that really doesn't make it any better. It would have been more palatable had resume not been one of the worst names in the history of fiction i did like the honeymoon and wedding scenes and the movie still wasn't outright bad it's just not as good as any of the other ones in the series most of which are quite underrated which i agree i think a lot of them are underrated i think they're really fun i think the other ones in the movies i agree are really too fun. like i think that was i think that was a solid take on it pretty solid it's not a pro-life message per se it's just the angle that mm-hmm. stephanie myers took it's definitely an angle like definitely an angle like it's pretty it's right there <laughs> it is yeah this is a one out of ten stars on imbd and i just picked this one because i i just really like the title they wrote that's breaking... how i picked those ones too <laughs> yeah this one says breaking wind part one <laughs> <laughs> this is uh this was written in 2019 boring boring so boring 
fourth best in the franchise. I am not confident in breaking down part two if that's not even the last place. I'm nervous about part two. I don't know how if I'm going to like part two. I'm probably not. I only watched it once, so I don't remember enough of how bad it was to say. This one is also 1 out of 10 on IMBD. This was written in 2020. Um, the title is, Why is this a two-part movie? It makes no sense to make this movie a two-part series. The worst part is how the movie is stretched to make more money from teens. Christian Stewart mm-hmm. is so awful and is making the movie dreadful to watch. You said, yeah, you definitely called it out. Like, they they made it two parts so they can make more money. That's it. Yeah. They're like, you see how much how much money the Deathly Hallows part one and two made? Let's do mm-hmm. that. It's the only way to bring in people more is splitting it up into two. Exactly. This one is a two and a half star one. It, write, it writes, it was horrible. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> which is like how i feel about the twilight like it's pretty like they're fun they're mm-hmm. really funny they're not oscar award winning movies but they're fun no. so i love them they're teen choice award winning movies exactly <laughs> this one is a four star one and i don't know why they wrote this one for this movie because if if you're teen jacob by this point you should stop being teen jacob <laughs> I agree. It is, this is the time to stop being Team Jacob or stop admitting or saying it out loud because this person just wrote four that. stars Team Jacob. I'm like, really? You're going to write this one about the one where he falls in love with a baby? Really? Let's think about how we got to that that decision. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one, I like this one because it's so weird. It's a one and a half star one. I laughed a lot. Funny movie. And then it, it, and Denzi goes, guys, I watched this with Lila. I'm like, who's Lila? Oh my god, tell <laughs> me more. This is a big deal. I, <laughs> who's Lila? Is she important? This is two and a half stars. <laughs> Proof that children are pure evil. Not wrong. Not wrong. Five star one. Belle is the most annoying, self-centered, boring protagonist in the history of fictional characters. How is everyone willing to die for this bitch? Especially in this one. Yes, because like, but at this point, it's like, what did what does she bring to the table? <laughs> That's so um, great yeah, for everyone. Literally. She's asleep for most of this movie. She's out. This one's a good one. What is Bynes' plan to permanently get rid of Jacob Black? Hello, Joe? Joe. Joe, what is the plan? <laughs> Throw this man out of your country. <laughs> this, oh, I love this one because I, I agree so hard. I died laughing when Bella's bro- spine broke. <laughs> It was funny though, because the way she bent, she went, ah! <laughs> she just went like, like, like that. It was, I'm sorry, it was funny. Well, whenever, whenever she starts, when she like officially transforms and mm-hmm. like she goes, her body just pops out. Oh, yeah, it just, like, <laughs> it looks like, it looks like they gave her bigger boobs. Yeah, that's what I, that's just what I thought. I'm like, oh, when you turn into a vampire, you get bigger boobs? Like, that's what I thought, because I didn't know her chest had broke. Her ribs, well, yeah, probably, because he was giving her CPR and he's a vampire. for so long. And he's very strong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is a three and a half star one. <laughs> this one, this is just a dummy. That's why user protection is important. And just don't be horny. Thumbs up. First and foremost, mm-hmm. they didn't know that they that was Could. even physically possible. What was a condom going to do? That thing would have broken. <laughs> yes. No kidding. Keep it. <laughs> you see what they did to the room? Yes. They weren't thinking that they needed to wear one in the first place. Yeah. Also, Bella got her sex talk when she was eight. I don't think she remembers. <laughs> They're married. Yeah, that's the whole thing. They're like, isn't that the, like, isn't that what everyone complains about? Like, oh, you should have been married if you got pregnant. And then you're going to yell at her was. for getting pregnant. Like, really? Listen, Stephanie Myers went out of her way to make sure these whores got married yeah. before they had sex. <laughs> okay. This one's a one star one. Just going wildly off the rails. Full-blown Mormon propaganda. Yeah, very true. Five stars. One of the best, if not the best, of the Twilight films. Great storyline and acting. Disagree. It's it's just terrible. One and a half star. It's just so fucking slow. (laughs) I just love how how different these are, all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two and a half. Watch while grading trig homework. Way to knock out two obligations all at once. Okay. Why is this an obligation to you? You didn't have to watch it. Maybe they were doing a rewatch. Yeah, yeah, and they're maybe. like, well, I, ha- I guess I have to get through Breaking Dawn Part 1. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We're doing the same thing. We were obligated to watch this movie. Exactly. I will never watch it again. It's not, it's not a good one. I will gladly watch 
the other ones though. Yeah. I just needed you to fully see yeah, what Yeah, I got to know the whole story. I have to yeah. know what happens. I needed you to experience learning what exactly imprinting yes was yes you know like i couldn't i couldn't let you not i honestly could have just told you and we could have skipped this point <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really funny but i don't know it was good to watch it was i'm glad i watched it now i know uh speaking of imprinting this one doesn't have any stars and that's like a few of them I, but you Some can tell just review they don't rate on letterbox they just right you could tell how they felt about it though because this person mm-hmm. goes Imprinting aside, even this was an absolutely despicable, despicable display from Jacob. Hashtag Teen Jacob, girls, how do you defend this? True. True. I like that one person going, Teen Jacob, how do you defend that? What are you doing? <laughs> Literally. This one's five stars. Your life doesn't flash before your eyes when you die. Instead, you see a moody Tumblr style fan edit. <laughs> Which is how this movie, that's how mo- this movie did it when she was like viewing her life like, <laughs> sorry <laughs> no that was actually really good i liked it thank you you should be that, that should be our theme song i was literally gonna say that i'm not even kidding you for the twilight ones you should do that so funny <laughs> it's fucking fantastic oh my god well, if honestly i would pick the possibility instead though be like there's a possibility <laughs> oh that one would be so good okay that one's really good <laughs> either one we'll see if i decide to yeah. do that <laughs> this one's half a star this one got into it okay. as if the franchise couldn't become any more unhinged they only went and made an abortion drama in which nothing really happens until the last 20 minutes where it all hits the fan in the most absurd way possible it might be the worst one so far, but it's also the one I spent the most time laughing at. So honestly, who knows? Oh, yeah. it is. It is ridiculous. It's it's it, very ridiculous. Like it's not, but it's not just, in the same ways as the other ones. The other, I don't know. This yeah. one just irritated me. It just irritated the, me. I, for me, I just I feel like it's how serious it seems that it's taking itself this mm-hmm. time. Exactly. Like I said before, it, it seems like they're tr- they're attempting to grow up with their audience and they mm-hmm. fail. Yeah, really badly. This person continues. Bella Swan dead ass drinks blood out of an unbranded McDonald's cup in this movie. <laughs> and Jacob falls in love with a baby literally five minutes out of the womb. So honestly, I say this is the point that watching through the series really starts to pay off from a comedy value standpoint. Even if the fair. first one has... Yeah. Wait, what? I said fair. Oh, yeah. F- c- completely. Even if the first one has all those hilarious running scenes. This movie's fun to make fun of, but it's not fun to watch. It's not like some, if I had friends over, I'm not going to put this one on. I'm going to put on either the first one or Eclipse. Yeah. Okay, this is the one, and this is why I love Letterboxd. You get some weird people on Letterboxd just writing reviews, Mm -hmm. and this is one of them. I don't even know what their stance on the whole movie is. I'm just going to read it. Okay. This person said, Wish I was in the honeymoon scene. I would be fine with being Bella or Edward in it. In it, My fake Twilight movie, to be honest, or maybe New Moon comes first. Not sure. 5.55 when writing this, it is a sign that one day, in reality, I will be in the honeymoon scene. I will be with them. Meow. Let's not draft our fanfics on Litterbox, okay? This is the place to bring <laughs> our... Let's put all our Wattpad fan fiction stories and just copy yeah. and paste them on here yeah just I... get your actually you know what steal steal your letterbox no, <laughs> not your letterbox steal your fan fiction ideas from letterbox quit going to tumblr okay <laughs> letterbox is where everybody's clearly um, drafting their ideas yeah yeah i just love that one because it was just so i had nothing almost nothing to do with the movie just this mm-hmm. just the honeymoon scene as unhinged as the rest of the movie Yep. This one's a half star one. This thing has a scene where a grown ass man falls for an infant. Fucking disgusting. Yep, yep. That is the biggest thing you take away from this movie, other than Bella becoming a vampire finally. This one's a five star one. I don't remember liking this movie that much, but I rewatched it for my podcast and I was surprised by how much I liked it. Minus the imprinting part. That still gives me the creeps. And I like that one because that's what we're literally doing. <laughs> yeah, except we don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> this one's good. Of all the anti-abortion films I've seen, this might be the worst. 
this is a one star one. Ooh, ooh, they get married. Ooh, she has a demon baby. The end. Why the fuck did I watch this on my birthday? <laughs> Someone's <laughs> mad. <laughs> they That's wasted it. their birthday watching this movie. I'm wondering if yeah. they, they went and saw it on their birthday. Well, when's it from? It all says from 2022. But I don't know if that's all. It's accurate on there. Oh, okay. So that person was. Their friends were like, okay, yeah, just you pick the movie. Or like they were like, oh, you know what? I'm going to pick a movie I really want to watch for my birthday. And they picked that one thinking that it was better than it was. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry you saw that on your birthday. (laughs) Raise your hand if your birthday has been personally victimized by Stephanie Meyer and her (laughs) atrocities. Uh, This one's a two star one. The imprinting thing will never not be fucked up, even in a thousand years. Still a good mm-hmm. trash movie. <laughs> the other ones are so much better than with, you know, without the creepy stuff. Yeah, I think for some people, rewatching it probably has a nostalgia value. Yes, probably. And if you, it's different when you've read the books, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of components. Um, this is my last layer box one. Uh, two and a half one, really short. <laughs> Uh, bro fucked up the entire room with some dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, what were they doing? Like, what could have happened that everything's a mess? He's the boyfriend that punches holes in the walls. Yes. Oh my god. And Jacob, I don't know. If he, I feel like Jacob has more of that energy. But I don't know. Edward does too. I think she just, she's just into the guys he, that punch holes in walls. He's the one where you go to his room, like you go to his house for the first time mm-hmm. and you just see the holes in the walls and you're like what is that maybe i should leave <laughs> yeah but jacob you're like oh of course you have holes in your walls <laughs> yeah and i'm still gonna leave but like makes sense for you exactly like you can just see it this is a 10 out of 10 star one on imbd this came out in 2011 so this is shortly after the movie came out as flawless as anything from stephanie meyer is going to get the makeup and special effects work in this film were absolutely stunning and bell's transformation into a weak Carla's shell carrying a child inside her was magnificent. I can't tell if that was sarcasm or not. I mean, they gave it a 10 out of 10, but like the way they wrote that, it just reads sarcasm. Once again, Taylor Lautner shows off his acting chops. He even has an intense crying scene in this. Shockingly, the haircuts and costumes were the best of all the films in this movie. I liked Alice's haircut. I liked the pixie cut on her. It, I remember like her at the wedding. It's very pretty. It's like very 1920s. Yeah, and she wears a flapper style dress yes. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really pretty. Jasper, who normally looks uh, absolutely ridiculous, manages to actually have decent hair for once. There are a few things that seem just as dumb on screen as they did on the page. Jacob and Prince on resume, the name resume. But for the most part, screenwriter Melissa Rosenberg works with Stephanie to craft something much better than was actually in the book. The birthing scene alone has a lot of power to it. The cinematography was great and as always i totally love the soundtrack which was kind of a mix of indie and pop rock i honestly don't feel there's any proper way they could make part two cinematically pleasing because the last half of myers novel was an absolute train wreck so this person read the book and did not like what well, i guess because the book itself is breaking one and two like together we'll see what they mean i guess with yeah how the story goes in the second one mm-hmm. i don't think that this one was very good on any level i do not like this movie i just don't i do not like this movie it's like one of those movies where i watch it takes a lot for me not to like a movie this is one of them i don't like i just don't like like it it, it's not even redeemingly ridiculous if you had to rate it this one would be like a one out of five i'm gonna agree one out of five yeah i don't think my my mind wasn't really changed by any of the reviews of this movie i just Mm -hmm. you know i understand why some people give it a chance Mm -hmm. and some people enjoy it for what it is Mm -hmm. but i just i was not a big enough fan of this series when it came out and i didn't read the books so i don't know how to find any redeeming qualities in it exactly i agree well do you have any other thoughts no oh team charlie (laughs) all the way no. team, yeah team charlie for sure you've heard what we've had to say you've heard what the critics and the audience members have had to say you can tell that this might not be a movie in this saga that's worth your time mm-hmm. but if you are wanting to feel completed and watch the whole series as a whole i understand but if you're just watching through you can skip this one too but you know let us know what you think we should have an Instagram running soon, and we have a TikTok page that's up, but we haven't posted on it yet. But just look out for us at Easy Bake Takes on TikTok, and you can also find us on YouTube. It's also just Easy Bake Takes. 
We'll be posting some video versions of the episodes on there in the future and posting clips from the episodes on TikTok. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Easy Bake Takes. I'm Kat. And I'm Riley. Easy watching out there. <laughs>